until week 14 of the fantasy basketball season and only three weeks left before the fantasy playoffs are ready. So this season's flying by and these are crucial weeks now. If you're on the brink of making the playoffs or if you're trying to get a bye week in your leagues before the playoffs, but here's a few players at the guard position. You should get on waivers and can help your team out. The first guy's Dwayne Bacon for the Orlando Magic. So the Magic obviously at the trading deadline, made a lot of deals a couple days ago, trading Evan Fournier, trading Aaron Gordon, and surprisingly trading Nikola Vukovic as well. So Dwayne Bacon, he's been getting some big minutes of late, and also Terrence Ross, he's been out as well. So Bacon making the most of his opportunity and expanded playing time now the last few games on the season. He's ranked 281 in fantasy basketball, 10.4 points a game. Three rebounds, 1.2 assists, a three a game, 84% from the foul line, and 40% from the field. But the last couple of weeks, since he's gotten more playing time, he's been playing better. 13.5 points a game, 3.8 rebounds, 2.5 assists, 78% from the foul line, and 42% from the field. So pretty decent numbers for Bacon. And he's more of a scorer and he'll get you 4 or 5 rebounds a game. But he's been pretty impressive since the trade deadline when they traded all those guys. And he's still available in 91% of fantasy leagues. And I would give him an ad. March 24th versus Phoenix. 11 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists. March 26th versus Portland. 17 points, 3 rebounds, 6 assists, a steal, and a 3. And then last night at the Los Angeles Lake is a huge game for Bacon. The best of the season for him, 26 points. Eight rebounds and assists, two threes, and 33 minutes. So he's playing 25 to 30 minutes a game since he got more playing time after all these trades with the Magic. Just the only thing with him is when Terrence Ross comes back, what type of role is Bacon going to have? But Bacon, he's definitely worth the pickup at the guard position. The second play is Michael Carter-Williams, his teammate of the Orlando Magic. So the Magic this week, a lot of guys benefiting from the trades they made and getting more playing time. So Carter Williams, he's been on the radar on and off this season, but he's not that consistent of a player. But you got to go with the guy getting playing time. And Williams, yes, he did get banged up in last night's game with the knee injury. But if he's only day-to-day, -day, I think he'll be fine on the season. He's ranked 340th in fantasy basketball, 8.7 points a game, 4.5 rebounds, 4.2 Assist 67% from the foul line and 38% from the field. So Michael Carter Williams, yeah, he was never a good option for free throws and field goal percentage, that's for sure. But he could give you other categories. And this guy was a former rookie of the year, so he, year, so he's not a total scrub. But the last couple weeks, now 6.6 .6 points a game, four rebounds, 3.8 assists, 45% from the foul line. And 30% from the field to Carter Williams since the trades happened with the Magic. He's been playing about 25 to 30 minutes a game. March 24th versus Phoenix. 8 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals. March 26th versus the Portland Trailblazers. 11 points, 5 rebounds, 6 assists, and a block. And then last night versus the Lake is he only played 13 minutes before he left with a knee contusion. So he should be considered day-to-day. -day. He had 3 rebounds, 3 assists. And a steal, so Carter Williams, hopefully it's a short-term thing. And he only misses a game or two, because I definitely think he's worth an ad. He's going to get a lot of playing time. Him or RJ Hampton over there in Orlando. So we'll see how that situation shakes out. And Carter Williams, he's available in 85% of fantasy leagues. The next guards, Horton Tucker of the Los Angeles Lakers. So Horton Tucker, he was on the list last week as an ad, is Taylor Horton Tucker. And he's on it once again. This week, so the lake is obviously a lot of injuries they've been dealing with. Anthony Davis and LeBron James are out for multiple weeks and probably a month here, in my opinion. They're going to take their time with those guys. So, Horton Tucker, guys like Kyle Kuzma and Coldwell Pope got to pick things up and take the workload, even though the lake is just signed Andre Drummond yesterday on the season. He's ranked 242, is Horton Tucker, eight points a game. 2.7 rebounds, 2.3 assists a game, 83% from the foul line and 44% from the field in the last couple weeks since the extended playing time for Horton Tucker. He's ranked 218 with 11 points a game, 3.6 rebounds, 3.7 assists, 84%
from the foul line and 46 percent for them from the field so that's pretty good numbers for tucker in the scoring and he's giving you some rebounds and assists just got to see him score more and be more consistent is horton tucker and the last three games for a march 25th versus the philadelphia 76 is three points three rebounds to assist march 26 versus cleveland 15 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals. And last night versus Orlando, he only played 18 minutes, 4 points, 2 rebounds, and assists. And Horton Tucker, he's available in 77% of fantasy leagues. But the playing time's still going to go up. The Lakers, they didn't really make any deadline deals. So I think Horton Tucker, they're going to play this youngster. And they're going to see what he has. And fantasy owners in 12-team leagues or deeper should definitely take a shot on him. The next guard is an Akeli Alexander Walker. So Alexander Walker, he was on the list last week. And once again, he makes it again here. He's still available in 64% of fantasy leagues is an Akeli Walker. And he's been playing expanded minutes the last few weeks here. And on the season, he's ranked 177 with 9.6 points a game, 2.9 rebounds, 1.9 assists, a steal a game, one and a half threes a game, 80% from the foul line, and 41% from the field. But the last two weeks, when this guy gets minutes, he puts up the numbers, 16.3 points a game, 4.7 rebounds, two assists, 1.2 steals a game, 1.2 blocks a game, four threes a game, 66% from the foul line, and 43% from the field. So Alexander Walker, he's given fantasy owners a lot of categories. Just a poor foul shooter and his field goal percentage ain't all that great at 43%. But besides that, he's putting up big games and he's giving you a little bit of everything in rebounds, three-point shooting, and assisting. March 23rd versus the Lake, he's 18 points. Seven rebounds, three assists, a steal, and three threes. March 26th versus the Denver Nuggets. 14 points, five rebounds, five assists, two steals, two blocks, and four threes. And then versus Dallas, March 27th, a huge game. 20 points, six three-pointers, five rebounds, and assists. So he's playing huge minutes of late. 30 to 40 minutes per game. Alexander Walker's been playing and he's a player definitely worth an ad and somehow he's still out there like I mentioned in 74% of fantasy leagues and this guy could score the basketball they're high on him over there in New Orleans and they want to see what they got here and they've been winning some ball games of late three out of the last four since the expanded minutes have gone to Alexander Walker and the fifth and final guard I would look to add on the waiver wire this week Steo Medallion the Oklahoma City Thunder. So Medellin, he's going to get a lot of playing time. Shea Gilligas Alexander, he's out for a while. and We don't know the timetable. And the Melodin, he's already been added in 7% of fantasy leagues. But he's still out there in a whopping 84% of fantasy leagues on the season. He's ranked 234 in fantasy basketball. 8.5 points a game. 3.2 rebounds. 3.4 assists. 1 steal a game. 1.7 threes a game. 75% from the foul line and 38% from the field. So his field goal percentage is definitely going to hurt fantasy owners. But besides that, he could score the basketball. His assist numbers are pretty decent. And he's getting about one to one and a half steals a game. And in the last few weeks where he's got an expanded role, he gets Alexander injury, 11.8 points a game, 4.3 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 1.2 steals a game, two and a half threes a game. 33% from the field, so that's not great for Mendelian. But now, like I said, Gilligas is out a while, and this kid, they're high on him. They even traded Terrence Ferguson at the trade deadline and George Hill. So all these backup minutes or starter minutes will go to Maldon, and we'll see what he can do, and he's definitely worth an ad, and I even added him in a few leagues. March 22nd in Minnesota, 9 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists, a steal of block in three threes. March 24th versus Memphis. 10 points, 4 rebounds, 2 three-pointers, a steal. And March 27th versus Boston. Possibly his best game of the season. 22 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, and 4 threes. So this kid, he's got huge upside. And like I said, what Hill and Ferguson traded. And what Al Gilligas Alexander out for a while he's definitely worth an answer that's a few guards i would look to add on the waiver wire this week in week 14 of the fantasy basketball season